What's up everybody, Gaming Gargoyle here. Welcome. In today's video we are playing Salish. It's an early access game available on Steam. Basically at the core, Salish is a trading and management game centered around the accumulation of wealth and the prosperity of your household. Live through the turmoil of the Dark Ages and do whatever you can to bring riches to your family. So that is directly taken from Steam. Now, being early access game, the game has some bugs, glitches, and exploits. Um, however, that yeah, being said and forewarned, and knowing things will change over time, it is a great game at its core. I played a few hours of it so far and loving it. I'm doing a YouTube video on it right now because currently I don't have enough computer RAM to be able to stream right at the moment. But more about that in future videos and that as well as time goes on. Big shout out to the uh, indie dev and publisher Stardog Games. I mean, it's so far I've seen him in the forums and Steve, um, quite a few of his teams in there as well. Um, if you want more info or anything, links and you know goodies are always in the description down below. But enough of the blah blah blahs. Let's get this episode started, shall we? So first things first, I am visiting my. Uh, family at the moment right now so I don't have my usual setup you may hear the microphone being a little off I don't have a pop filter or anything right now so please bear with me but I'm on a bit of a vacation and I'm enjoying myself and this game is something I've really been enjoying so I just I gotta pop on the record button and do the, the video on it so let's do the tutorial Oh yes, warning, these loading screens can be very, very long, like upwards of two minutes, so, well, in this case, not very long at all. Alright, welcome to Salish. In this tutorial, we'll teach you about the interface, camera controls, show you how to manage buildings, control your characters, and interact with the world. Saving is disabled during this tutorial. Okay, so, please, scan. let's not crash, shall we? There we go. So the house by the Mortimer family. When something is selected, its portrait and some basic info is displayed here. Your own house is currently selected. Okay, got it. Blue thing, right? Okay. Uh, production storage, upgrades, cell building. Okay. This menu will show you management buttons related to the currently selected object. You can hover over each button to see what they do. Oh, did that already. Next. Ooh, some buildings will allow you to view inside them. This can be done by clicking this button or by double clicking on the building itself. It's unavailable during the stage of the tutorial. Okay, so that means we'll go in there soon. This is your clock. It shows you the current season and the position of the sun. Oh, and time. Go. Ooh. There that. There that. There that. Okay. Uh, the position of the sun in the sky. You can hover over it for more specific detail. You can speed up time using the plus and minus keys on your keyboard. An indication of the current game speed will appear here if the game speed is anything but. But. Okay. In the top bar, your money is displayed along with the people, family, log, and menu buttons. Okay, so people, family, log, and menu. Okay. To the right is your player portrait. Alright, got it. So cash, people, family, log, got it. All right, menu. You can click your player portrait to select your player and double click it to warp the camera to their location. Okay, already on there, yes. Next. These are important buildings. The market and the house. At the top is the market and below is the house. Any further buildings you buy will be added in here. You can hover over these buildings, over these buttons, to see the building name and any people or carts associated with it. Click the button to select the building and double click to warp your camera to the building. Beam me up, Scotty. Uh, apparently done. Now we'll take you through the camera controls. Alright. Controlling the camera. The WASD. Dreaded wasn't. Or arrow keys to move the camera. Oh, okay. Cool. Hold the middle mouse button, or Alt, and move the mouse button to freely rotate the camera. Okay, I can't because my mouse is set for the zoom feature. However, I can. Ah, whoa, sorry guys. Didn't mean to make you ill. This is pretty. Very nice, very nice. That's the market, okay. Rain, rain, go away. Anyway, uh, scroll and mouse wheel or use Q and E 
to zoom in and out. Once you're comfortable with these controls, click next. Ooh, 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 ooh. In, out, in, out, go. Oh yeah, next. More tips. Hold shift while moving the camera to speed it up. Okay, so shift. Oh, okay, cool. Left click on buildings, people, and carts to select them. So this is a woodcutting hut in Touchshire. Press space to zoom to the selected cart or character. Space. Ooh. You go, girl. Where are you? Candy with an axe. If there's ever a fight, I want you on my side, okay? Now use tab to open and close the overview map, which is helpful for when finding a particular building or resource. Next. Now you will use what you've earned to find and buy a bakehouse, and then we'll go through how to manage it. Objectives. Find and select the town's bakehouse, and to buy the bakehouse. Well, they just told me it was easiest to go to the town. So let's back up. The bakehouse. Uh, farm, bread, bakehouse. Bakehouse. Buy the bakehouse, it says. 3,000? Yeah, we got 10,000. Great work. Remember, most buildings can be owned, but the AI characters will also try to buy them, so it pays to get in quick. Yeah, that's very true. Previous game, I didn't get to buy too many things, but however, the, I did catch a patch just before I left on vacation, so hopefully that was fixed. Objectives. Now that you own a bakehouse, you will need to employ a worker. Select your bakehouse. Click Hire the Worker button in the Management menu, and click the next to the person you want to hire. Oh, the plus next, right there. Okay. So, yes, I want the bakehouse. And then... Who do we want? Young, strapping young man, haul bags of flour around, shall we? Sibley from the Stanley family. So, Sibley Stanley, you are no longer unemployed. You're working for me. Great work. Your new worker will rush over and get ready for work. Remember, at the end of each day, you'll automatically pay wages to each of your workers, which is at 11 o'clock at night. Just knowledge from the previous gaming play. These wages can be adjusted with the adjust wages options in the management menu of each building. Each business also has specific hours in which it operates. Outside of these hours, your workers cannot be bossed around by you. Well, remember I said there was some glitches, bugs, and exploits? I'm going to show you some new things, but not in the tutorial. We'll save that for the next uh, video, the Let's Play. Objectives. Next, we will take a look at managing the bakehouse. Select your bakehouse and click the production storage button in the management menu. Well, already? Uh, selected? Selected. And then go production and storage. This is your inventory of your bakehouse. Everything is stored here. Good to know. The inventories of your carts, your player, your companions, dogs, etc., and your player, your player's close family will show up in here. So there'll be like Star Dog, who's the developer, or whoever your character is, your wife, and then your dogs. They all get one of these bubbles here where they can hold three items. Can't carry very much. Next. In this panel, you'll find any workers or carts that are assigned to the building. Which, there's the cart, there's the worker. You click here to assign the worker to the cart. Click this button to view the recipes that this building is able to produce. All right. This empty slot is used to assign the production to the worker. This empty slot is the driving spot, is the driver spot for your car, which I've already done. From here, you can assign a driver. Objectives. In the production carts panel, click on the driver slot of your cart and assign the worker as the driver. Done that. And two, select your cart. Now, with the cart selected, click the Move To button in the Management Center. Move To. Move the icon attached to the cursor over to an area of terrain near the market and left click to tell your cart to move there. Wait for your cart to move to the market. Okay, so let's close that and go, where's the market? That's the red thing. So let's go click. Oh, no, hold on. There it is. No, nope, that wasn't it. That was my character. Ah, I'm failing horribly. Okay, so we want, here we go, move to. Thank you. And, yeah, there we go, sorry. There we go, guy. Wait for the cart to move to the market. All right. See, it said pause on floor, right? Can we, yeah, there you can go faster. Excellent. Okay, so we're at the market. Now what? Um, let's try moving him again. 
How about right here? There we go. Your card has arrived at the market. Select the market and click on Buy and Sell in the Management menu. Find the barley flour item and click on it to begin a trade. Use the scroll wheel to adjust the quantity and transfer just five barley into your cart's inventory. Okay, so here, and then a cart pops up here for us. We want five barley. Barley flour? Look. Barley flour. Wheat flour. Barley flour. And we only want five. There we go. Five. Now that you have some resources, you'll need to offload them to your bakehouse. There are several ways to do this, but the easiest is to send home. With your cart selected, click the Send Home button in the Management menu. Wait for your cart to return home and offload those goods. Okay, so we're here. We click on that, and then we're here, which is Send Home. Let's close that off, shall we? Let's just uh, let's zoom into our guy. Look at Mr. Muscles here. And there we go. Great, now you have enough flour at your bakehouse to produce some bread. Open up the production storage window of your bakehouse. Click the empty slot next to your worker in the production carts manual panel, sorry, and then select the barley bread production from the menu. Okay, production and storage. That's the house, my bad. And there we go. Now, open up the... Uh, and, and then select... Oh, okay, so click the empty slot next to your worker and then select the barley bread production. There we go. Great work. Your worker is now producing goods as indicated by the timer. After the goods are produced, they will be added to the bakehouse's inventory. Each person needs to buy food and to survive, so they will come to your bakehouse and buy the food you produce, but you can also sell it at the market for a quicker income. Those are the very basics of producing goods. There are many different buildings for you to play with and many different recipes to produce. Each building and cart can also be upgraded by the upgrades option in the management menu. Play around with the big house for a while and experiment with the different aspects. And then when you're ready, click done and we'll continue on to the character stage. Alright, so there's things like here so we can uh, adjust the wages. So basically the base wage for each working in this building is 120. Adjusting this will affect the production efficiency. So meaning if you pay them $150 a day, he's going to uh, finish this at a much faster rate. So he works from 6.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. and it's currently 12.15. Pretty cool. Now, I've also learned is we can supervise these guys, which will give a temporary boost. Now, let's just get our guy running over here. If you double right click, you can get him to run. So now you just right click the building, go to supervise, and then you'll see here, we get ourselves a production uh, sped up. Now, this lasts for three hours, so in a nine and a half hour workday that most of these crews work, you can get it in about three times. Now, that works to your advantage if you're paying at the top dollar and that, so it is pretty neat. Um, there are other things in that that I'm going to save for the next video for the bugs, glitches, and exploits. I'll show you guys all that later on. But for now, let's just continue on with uh, playing around. As we can see here, we got ourselves supervised. We click on my guy, or our character, and then press oh, yeah, start out and go in. We can actually... What's going on? Apparently we couldn't get first person. Uh, what's up with the camera? Uh, that's why, because he's inside. Okay. So that's why we can't see. Let's see. If I click the building, we can go inside. Let's view inside the big house. So here we go. So I was just in here telling this guy off, telling him to get to work. Speeds up his production. Let's see, so now we got 38%. Uh, so it's going a little bit faster. If we sped up time, then you could really see the difference in the speed that uh, they actually have with this production bonus. Okay, so uh, what else is there? So here's the information panels and all that. This is what tells you what we can what we cook in that. Um, so barley bread, we need barley flour. For wheat bread, we would need. Um, two wheat flours, which will make us three loaves of bread. Barley bread makes us three barley buns from two flour. Barley biscuits is one barley flour and eggs, and that gives you four items, so that might not be a bad payoff, only getting two to get four. However, it might be a cheaper item. Fish cakes, we'll need fish and things like that. Uh, for two wheat flour, three eggs. So hopefully the money is, you know, appropriate for that. Uh, the pies, for now we're just doing the tutorial so we won't go into, you know, all the advanced stuff that we can do. 
So for now, let's move on. Now we'll go through the basics of using your player character to move around and interact with things. Oh, I forgot there was a bit more. Right click on anywhere on your terrain and your character will begin to move to that spot. You can double click your player's portrait to find them quickly. Wait for your character to arrive at that marker and double right click will tell your character to run to that position and pressing R will tell it to run it on and off. Okay, got it. So let's uh, leave the building here. Let's give ourselves a bit better review. Let's go back here and let's tell our guy then to run, run forest, run, let's hit R. Uh, let's hit R again. No, walk. No, run. Walk. Alright, there you go. Great work. Right click in the ground at any time will move your character to that spot. We can also use a right click to tell your player to do a task or do an interaction. So you press and hold, up comes an interaction. So we can beg, waylay, or pickpocket, or my favorite, entertain. Shall we go check out our gentleman? Press our portrait, press space. Oh, that was not what I expected. Beautiful music. Most excellent. Great work. Objectives. Ensure that your bake house is doing a production. We are. Right click on the bake house and select the supervise option. We have. Uh oh, we might have to wait three hours. Oh no. Your character will go inside the bake house, briefly supervise your worker, which will boost production speed. Remember, you can double click on your bake house or click view inside button to move your camera indoors. So we click bake house and we don't have that right now. Excellent. But will it give us the dreaded X? No, we can. Thank you, Mr. Stardog. You thought of everything. I see you fixed a couple spelling errors as well. Great work. Some interactions can only be used every once in a while or under certain circumstances, and others can be made or can be unavailable for various reasons. In these cases, the interaction will appear with an X icon or not appear at all. Each person has an opinion of you. A person who really likes you might want to marry you, while someone who hates you might want to burn your house down. Yeah, they, they seem to do that. Uh, a simple way to boost relations with someone is to talk with them. And that's true. And the ladies, they like to flirt. And best way to get your relationship up. Now, objective. Send your character to talk or to flirt with somebody by right-clicking on a different character and selecting the appropriate interaction. A lot of characters will be busy and the interactions will be unavailable. So just continue looking until you find someone. Yeah, there we go. We can talk to Graham. Welcome, Graham. Or Gabura from the Graham... Or no. Graham Neville family. Sure. Graham Neville. You're a beggar. How's it going, man? Most interactions have a cooldown before they can use again. You can keep track of all the people you've interacted with by opening the people window up here. This will show you all the players and people you've met and sort them by relation so you can always find them. The relationship with each person is displayed as a gem. Red for unfriendly, blue for neutral, green for friendly, and purple for love. How sweet. Can I click it? Yes. So we got Sibley, Graham, and Catherine, the Rutledge family. There you go. She's the one with the axe. She's scary. As you gain higher relations with someone, more interactions will become available with them, which may result in marriage and children. Objectives. There are many interactions that your player can do. Find and right click on an apple tree or a bush, then select Forage to send your character to pick fruit. Click on your character and open his inventory from the management menu and watch as he collects fruit. After he has collected some fruit, walk to the market and sell that fruit. Alright, so. There's a forage area, tree nature, so I'm going to go right click. There you go, forage for food. Let's click our guy. Let's go. Let's go for the walk with him, shall we? Hi, lady. Hi, lady. Oh, dude. Just right through the horse, man. Watch where you're going. Alright. You don't see any snakes around here, right? Apple tree's free. We're good. Where did you get the basket? Where did you store that? You don't have a backpack on. I mean, I don't think that's a tunic you're wearing, but... You know, you weren't happy to see me. Yep. Great job. Alright. Let's see how many we got. Let's check our, our character's inventory. Okay, well, it says we have one. After he's collected some fruit, 
walk to the market and so on. All right, let's just let's just go to the market. Uh, double click on it. Uh, have him walk through, why not? Just take your time, but just, just, hey. it's a nice day. A bit of rain. Not carrying an umbrella. Glad there isn't the, uh, the sickness yet in the tutorial. So let's go ahead and sell it. And there we go. Great work. Your character can also forage in bushes and go fishing. Any resource you collect can either be sold or used in a production. There are also certain interactions your character can do in a specified area. You can pickpocket, waylay, beg, and entertain. While your character is doing any of these interactions, he will automatically interact with the people and carts around him, depending on what that interaction is. Objectives. Find an area that looks like it would get a lot of foot traffic, so near a road or market. Hold right click over the spot, train long enough for your cursor to flash, then it will pop up a radio, a radio menu. Select entertain, and your character will travel to that spot and play the instrument. Alright, let's, uh, let's see. There are some people coming in right here. Oh. There we go. Come on, bud. Ooh. Now we can do first person mode, but if I remember by doing that, we end up uh, losing the entertaining thing quickly. But great work. People walking by may stop to listen and pay you a few coins, which was up in this little corner here. You saw the, the amount and saying entertained. When you want to finish any interaction, you can simply move your character away from the spot. So just click. We're done. That covers the basics of character movement and interaction. Your character is capable of much more than what we've gone over. However, everything follows those same rules. Left click on things to manage them. Right click on things to have your character interact with them. Take your time to further familiarize with yourself with these systems and then you're ready. You're ready. You can click done to quit this tutorial. Well, guys, that video has gone on for quite some time for a tutorial, but I've enjoyed every bit of it. Uh, remember, if you like the video, smack that like button. If you want some more videos, hit subscribe. If you want a discussion or have an observation, you know, please leave a comment below. If you want to stay up to date, stalk me on my social media. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode, which is going to be a Let's Play haven't decided how I'm going to roll with it yet, so stay tuned for that. Thank you once again, everybody. Have a wonderful evening. Take care. Bye-bye.